Hey everyone, this is the Chaos DEI Working Group, and you're here with us today. The links are in the chat for the agenda. We have a little group. Sean, you didn't add your name here. Do you care? I'm working on it. I'm working okay. on it. Okay. All right. I know it was a hard question. I didn't think it was hard, but I have to think about it. I, to, I, to... <laughs> I don't usually watch movies either. Like I just, I usually yeah, no. just binge Netflix. So I watch like a 10 hour movie in like hour chunks. Yeah. <laughs> I just finished Last of Us. Oh yeah. Oh, is that good? It was, oh, it was great. It really is great. I heard it was really good. I haven't seen that though. And like Mandalorian, you know, like I do those kind mm -hmm. of. Yeah. Yeah. Netflix and all of them, they have that down that 45 to 55 minute kind of chunk where, yeah, you end up watching full day of <laughs> of things. Um, anywho, so uh, let's jump in here. Armstrong, I'm so happy you're on here. Um, we were going to look at this metric that will open for me. There we go. And I remember you had some comments about Grimoire Lab and including that. Uh, yeah, I, okay. I think uh, my, Matt and I, we had some discussions here. He put the... Yeah, I, I referenced to this metric here, this collaboration platform activity, because I think that that's what you were talking about, a lot of that. Is that right? I mean, towards that direction, yeah. Because even like, uh, I think Sean also said the, the current state, we don't have this uh, kind of visualization for... No, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. um, it's a question whether you can really fully achieve this metric with, uh, with the trace data. I'm, I'm skeptical that you can. Like we can, we, can make, we can create some proxies for transparency, but... It's a part of part of what transparency is is inside people's head. You know, we don't we'll never see the back channels. Mm -hmm. That's true. Because, like, anyway, that can I mean it will increase also the level of complexity. Uh, what we can also do, like using the uh, natural language processing techniques, like topic modelings, and uh, where we could put each people each person like a note. Yeah, and the number of channel like the vertices just to show. I mean, it will increase the level of complexity. At the end of the day, are we really to pay the price for that to see those kind of things? So it's a kind of compromise. So what do we want to do here? Do we think so that there is a survey component to it? There um, is, and I think. I think um, gathering some of that survey data would be useful. I mean, this is this is planning on being a metric for badging. Yeah. Yep. Because if we go for the let's say the the channels. Mm -hmm. If we let let me just say, for example, the the mailing list. Even though we are migrating out from there, I'm just giving it as an example. Mm -hmm. If, for example, Matt sent a message to the community requesting something or bringing up a topic, and somebody replies that message, then it goes on and on. We could see the number of people based on their email addresses that we say like two. We could know how many people were involved in that discussion and what they were discussing, like the main topic. That can we can easily visualize that. We can go to Slack to see the number of active participants. Mm -hmm. So we could say for the past, uh, let's say uh, three months, might be you are in that channel, but you have never participated in any of the communication. So no activity will leave your node. Your node will be an isolated node. So there are a couple of ways we can do this. It all depends on at what level we want to visualize it. What about what Elizabeth is showing here? Yes, this is also, I really like this. Uh, I commented on this. This one is also good to okay. show the different channels. Because at this point, if you want to tell people that we are migrating from mailing list to a different channel, at, at point, it, it, when you will look at the 
the volume of communication for that channel. It might be so scanty, and then it becomes it becomes evidence based that oh yeah, there is just like a one one uh, kind of uh, traffic going on here, zero volume. It makes sense at that point. Like everybody's looking in this one spot for yeah. the, the communication. Yeah. Yeah. So if we if we are now going, let's say to Slack, you will see a high volume of traffic and and people are uh, active there. So if you tell people we are closing these people say, but why are you making such a decision? Now transparency will really come to support decision making. I think in Slack as well, you can see how much of the conversation, I hope you didn't say this already, Armstrong, but in Slack, you can no, see how ahead. much of the conversation is in private channels. So like yeah. Slack will give you that report. So if, you know, 90% oh, yeah. yeah. is happening in private yeah. channels, maybe that's not great. Yeah. So I think that's that would right. show up in this metric. Yeah. It, de it depends if the Slack API lets us access that data. That data may only be available to the owner of the channel. Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, and that would be kind of under, you know, like regularly reviewed. Yeah, so we would kind really. of leave it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a practice though. Okay. But actually, you could add, I kind of like that example you just talked about, Elizabeth. And so maybe that could be added. Where should we put that here? Or not. I mean, sometimes I wonder if we should include like full references to Slack, but. Yeah. Um, account of uh, activities across the various channels. Um, uh, yeah, like. Um, Like that? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we, yeah, we would really leave it up to the maintainer to figure out what they want to do with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so uh, do we want to? What do we want to do with here? Okay, so data points to consider. Let's see here. We can highlight the taxonomy of communication channels, the frequency. Uh, so we should add uh, frequency of. Well, we have number of meetings. Maybe number and number of channels and like volume. Number of communication channels and volume on each respective channel. channel. Mm -hmm. my, yeah. My, the only question I have about that is that is it looks like that is something you would have to be the owner of the Slack to you see. Do. Yeah, and I think we're saying that's okay. Yeah. It's just, okay. It's just community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna. Can I go ahead and resolve these? Okay. Yes, please. Yeah, please. I think that too. Mm -hmm. Okay, as a graph to see the flow in it. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Okay, I think we're good. Mm -hmm. um, and then we said this one was good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Then, just like an aside. For this uh, thing, you know, there are certain regions in the world, like for example, the Great Walls of China. Some communication channels are, are not really, uh, they are like censored. Mm -hmm. Then in Africa, we also suffer this problem of uh, internet uh, censorship, which affects communication channel. So sometimes asynchronous versus synchronous, we really need to do some kind of thing because people used to have this VPN to bypass all those things. Mm -hmm. If we look, we are really blessed in North America and the Western world, where we have this plenty of internet everywhere and not, no censorship at all. It's not true in a distributed system. So just to keep in our mind that uh, in terms of equity and transparency, sometimes we might accommodate people with difficulties in certain kind of communication. If we choose, let's say a channel that uh, is like Slack, people do not respond immediately. 
if you see our uh, our uh, members in Nigeria, sometimes they have difficulties connecting. They'll tell you their internet is not stable. I understand that because I've lived in those situations. So if we see the delay in communication, sometimes I mean there are things we can just you know uh, understand where they are coming from. We do have this other metric maybe we should include called the chat platform inclusivity, which kind of speaks to what you're talking about, I think, Armstrong. Yes. Yeah. Like allowing for um, you know, low bandwidth or things like that. And it does kind mm -hmm. of ask folks to look at that. Okay. Okay. Uh, we could include that. I like including just as a note, like think about these things as yeah. well. I mean, to your when you were talking, Armstrong, I mean. To the point I can think of, you know, many people who join these Zoom calls without video drop off several times throughout the call. Yes. And back yeah. in during the call, they're clearly on their phone, for example. Yeah. 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 So let's include this. Mm -hmm. So I think that does speak to transparency as well. Part of the spreadsheet. This is almost a, a model now at this point. Yeah, it's getting there. <laughs> oh, wait, what did we talk about? We're just giving examples. We're, we're, yeah. What we're saying is these are things that you might want to think about. Yeah. You don't have to do them all, but. Exactly. Oh, yeah. I need to, you're right, Matt. I need to find the. But it's all there in convenient. Uh, okay. Chat platform inclusivity. Here you are. That. Copy. Boom. So much better, isn't it? Oh my gosh, yes. The miracle of the clipboard. <laughs> well, and the spreadsheet is finally, it's really in good order at this point. And then our question here, how do we... Um... Like that? Yeah, you can probably lowercase chat platform. There we go. I think this is good. Yeah, I do yeah. too. And then we just need we'll just need to add that project access when we have that one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thanks, y'all. So this is ready to so I'll take this out because Armstrong already did yeah. that work. And I'll just put it, can I move it forward then? Is that cool? Yes. Yeah, I think it's cool. And we'll have some of those, the things we talked about in the web content meeting today. We'll have a few of those like, um, like just structural changes to the metric, but I think we can clean that up kind of post hoc. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's uh, three purple ones still in the thing okay. that I haven't um, published yet. So this will probably just go in that well. Okay. That group. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, uh, I think, is Project Access that one of those, actually? No. Where are we with this? Do we know? Um, I don't know. Seems like it's okay. We do have some questions and stuff. Okay. Should we look at this? Yes. Since Kevin's not here to talk about event location and equity, let's just do this too. What the heck? Yellow. Uh, is the documentation? Ended? Oh, yeah. Okay. These are suggestions. Yes, yes, yes. Sure. Yes. Collecting data or signaling. Project, okay. Uh, what is, okay, so this is project access. This is not part of the badging, correct? No, or, it is. It is? Yeah, this is the one of the four. I, I gotcha, I gotcha, sorry. Yeah, no, you're good. Okay. For the first three. So is this, is it in the spreadsheet? Yeah, project accesses. Yeah. Okay. It's under uh, in progress. Right here. I see it. Okay. 
and right with communication transparency. Those two are the ones that we are trying to push out for badging. Okay, he says the last two fit. I don't know what else was here, <laughs> but I'm gonna just, I think, there we go. I did not click that, someone else did. <laughs> just for the record, I did not do it. We just we thought wanted... it, it happened. <laughs> do we wanna take a minute? This is where it begins. <laughs> <laughs> do we wanna take a minute and uh, just read through this one more time? That would be great. Okay. Elizabeth, can you share the link to this, please? Thanks.
So what do you think about right now under implementation? We have, I don't know, like a handful of questions. And what do you think about moving those questions down to data collection strategies and, you know, having them be like the Likert scales? Yes. Like we do in many of our others. Yeah, I think that That's makes fine. a lot of sense. We also have referenced a few of the other metrics um, that kind of touch on this, so we might move them up too. Yeah. Kind of the way we did with the transparency. I'll add the project access. I'll just I'll add these. Okay, I've added those down. There was one I didn't really know what it meant. Um, like the fourth one down, it ends in websites. The project has a mechanism for published documents and project website. Hmm. Does that mean they have some way? Publishing things? <laughs> I guess. Yeah, maybe. I'm going to propose we remove it. Okay, so then So then yeah, so then if we remove all of those, the implementation becomes
Do we want to move these three metrics up? Where? Up to data collection strategies. I think that's what we did over here in communication. We can have it under yes, like regularly review data points to consider. I don't know. Where would you want to put them? Under here, like performing accessibility audits regularly. Um, regular reviews of um, events documentation. Yeah, like these three things. Yep, events documentation and chat platforms. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I would just say events, event location inclusivity, comma. Yep. And just get rid of metric in there. Yeah, exactly. Comma. Yep. Armstrong, can I add your name here at the bottom? Okay, go ahead, please. I'm trying while we're here. How do, exactly do you say your last name? Okay, it has two ways of saying it in French and in English. In so English, you just found gem, but the real pronunciation is Funjem. Funjem. Yeah. You have a it means something you perceive, then conceive. Funjem? Is that what it means? Yeah. Perceive, then conceive. Yeah. That's cool. I love it. Yeah. Trying to get my head around <laughs> that sequence of intellectual actions. <laughs> Perceiving, then conceiving. Hmm. Do you have a preference? No. Okay. <laughs> I've always said found gem. Yeah, that's the English uh, pronunciation. It's okay. Found mm -hmm. gem is the French pronunciation. Yeah. Similar to what is it we were talking about? Oh, Louisville. So, yeah. Yeah. Or my name. My name is French. German. It's German prey, right? German prey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was no. going to say, Sean, if you don't know how to pronounce his name after all this yeah. time, there is no help for you whatsoever. Well, but I was trying to think, like, what would the actual French pronunciation be? Would it be Jean Montpré? Jean Montpré, yeah. Wow, yeah. okay, now that was fancy, yes. Yeah. Matt Jean Montpré? Jean Montpré. <laughs> what does that mean, sounds... Matt? I don't know. From Germany? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Frenchman living in Germany. Yeah, I have no German, idea. No, I guess it would be a German. Spiritual germs. <laughs> living in France. I think this is looking pretty good. I, I mean, I just moved those questions down. You know, so nothing really changed content wise on those. Should I start uh, accepting some of these? Just yeah. Off. Yep, yep, yep. For all with interest. Um, yeah, I don't understand when we say for all with interest. With an interest? In, I think in uh, with an interest in participating or in contributing. Something like that. Community, oops, community members and maintainers want their projects to be accessible as possible for all with an interest in contributing. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah. Kind of is like a catch all for anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, take on leadership roles more easily. I think if we say more transparently. What's that? So 
So we just have, I'm going to change this to editing. We just have a parent. Does anybody want to take like one final look at it and then get it ready? Or I guess like move it to a markdown in GitHub if we think it's. If it's ready to go. I mean, I think it is. I can do that, Elizabeth. Burden and documentation. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool. Thanks, Matt. I'll just put it over here. Oops. Um, okay. Are we good to move on, I guess? Thanks, guys. That was really great. I added this on here. Um, just to, I just wanted to see if this group had any ideas. So Ruth and I have talked about this, um, these newcomer orientation sessions that we are hosting monthly. Um, we were doing hour long meetings. It was just a fire hose for these poor folks. Like it was just so much. And so um, we had talked about maybe breaking them up into smaller videos, like five, 10 minute max videos and just having like a playlist kind of, of like go watch these. Um, so that was one idea we had. Um, and then these also were very lightly attended. Maybe one or two folks would show up. I think because it was regular, they always knew there was another one coming. So if they were like, oh, I missed this one, I'll catch the next one kind of a thing, I think. So what Ruth and I were talking about doing is just kind of polling folks occasionally, periodically, and just saying, hey, who is interested in attending and doing like a more, uh, one on one. So like sending out a doodle, finding a time that works for folks, like that whole kind of ad hoc meeting instead of a regular thing on the calendar. Um, and then doing like, a, you know, sending them a calendar invite, like much more of like accountability, I guess, for attending, maybe. Um, but that is also requires a lot of coordination and um, a little more work. So I just was curious, like what folks on this call thought like if they had any other ideas or how we want to do this. So my thought, I'm putting it in here. I love the five minute videos for a welcome from you and or Ruth, you know, like yep. maybe a couple and they're like, check out this website. You know, this is what we're doing in the chaos project. Just really like five minutes, yep. you know, like taking that orientation and just like chunking it up really. Exactly. Yep. And I don't know how many chunks that would be, but, um, so I, I really like this. And the nice thing is, is you can share these in Slack really easily. So not even pin them, but like, you know, on a two week basis, like that could be your cadence by saying like to welcome everybody again. <laughs> here, uh, here are some videos. Yeah, here yeah. are a couple of videos that are super short and easy and you can watch them on your phone. You know what I mean? And they're yeah. really accessible. Um, or you do like, the first two in one week and then the next two, two weeks later, and then you do that again, you know, in the next month. So like the first week of every month is the first two videos. The third week of the month is the second two videos, something like that. You know, if you're having meetings that are attended by just a few people, mm -hmm. the, the cost of having you and Ruth do that is just really expensive. Not even just like money wise, just like time. Well, it's a, it's a return, right? Yeah. Like if there were a yeah. hundred people there, the return would be there, but right. maybe the videos are a better approach. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I will say um, that having that time to really connect with folks is great though. I will say that. So people who attend those orientations, I think are much more likely to engage as opposed mm -hmm. to somebody who just watches a video. So, so maybe, I'm really torn. What about you do the videos like on the, the first two as an example on the first week and the second two on the second week? And then on like the third week of the month, you say, hey, if you wanna follow up on these videos, here's a doodle poll. And we're gonna try to find a time for people who wanna talk through them a little bit. So that would keep, just do like a half an hour session. Yeah. And that would keep your opportunity to 
still connect with people in person. Yeah. And it would only be like your your meetings, I think the the doodle poll meetings wouldn't even necessarily have to be monthly. Like they would just like if, if you can't find a time until the next month, that's okay. You yeah. Know I mean? okay. It's like they could be every four weeks, they could be every six weeks, then they could sometimes they might be every three yeah. weeks. You know, like they could they could yeah. be variable as people have expressed an interest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing was that at the end of that orientation session is when we were going to introduce the tour guides. Okay. So we need kind of a flow to tour guides. And I, I don't know that just watching one five minute video is enough to warrant like a a tour guide help. I don't know. How how good are you with YouTube like to add the the link in the video? To say here's the next five minute video you know what i mean like oh yeah i think yeah i think you can add another like video like yeah. thing, you know i think i think it's if we time, created yeah. a, if we created a separate newcomer channel then i think the videos would just automatically play in a sequence oh you mean a, a playlist uh, yeah yeah so yeah that if we yeah, included if them as a set i think they auto play from one to one yeah okay like look in to autoplay. I think, yeah, okay. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Like you've yeah. seen this. You've had this happen to you when you click on a video and then the next one starts to play, starts, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I know how to do that. Um, I yeah. think it's just a, a setting that you just are like, what's the, yeah. And then maybe just cr create a new playlist, I think is all you have to yeah. do. What if in there too, like on those, whatever you call them, the tiles, oh, like yeah. I keep pointing, but like you can say, you know, check out our, our newcomer welcome web page. Click here, you know. Yeah. And it, I don't know how to do any of that. I'll look into that. that. Yeah, let's see what hard. kind of options we have for that. Yeah. Okay, cool. I Thanks. like the video idea a lot. And I think five minutes, like you shouldn't go past five minutes. Right. Just super low barrier. Just something that yeah, somebody could chunk at a time. Bus, like on a bike, like, <laughs> like having yeah. yeah whatever it might be having a quick coffee you know yep yeah okay well, okay cool good. thanks guys i'll chat with ruth about this as well too just see what she's thinking okay as well cool thanks yeah. uh badging that's me so i have a i put something in the badging channel this morning i was thinking about project badging and i had a concern that i would like to talk through so with respect to the DEI.md file, I don't have any concerns. So somebody puts that onto their repository, you know what I mean? Like they put it in their .github repo, we scan for its presence and then we award a badge accordingly. My concern came with the delivery of the report. And so the concern came not from the ability to do it. I don't have any concern about that. But it's the guarantee that it's going to a person that is going to do good with it. And we don't really well, have a guarantee of that. How do you get that kind of guarantee, though? Well, I mean, I, this is my concern. <laughs> so here's so so the I mean, there's a premise in the or an assumption that someone's not going to apply for a DEI badge for their project or for the repo unless they actually care about DEI. And so there is a there is a sort of a su assumption of trust, a su assumption of good actors engaged in the application for the badge. Yep, there there certainly is, and like the DEI.md file doesn't really have to live on that so much that assumption of trust. There is at least a, I think less so. So as an example, like would it be possible for somebody to apply for a badge? against a project that has a DEI file that exists already, and then I get the report. And I wanna use the report as a, as a weapon. I wanna prove that this is in fact toxic and that I have been you know, a particular target within a project. And I don't uh, wanna use it to make the project better. <laughs> I wanna use it to- So in that, in that specific case, the 
the way that um, Enoch and I have designed the badging process is you would, the person who applies would have to have some kind of commit privileges on the repository. So you couldn't apply unless you were able to grant commit access to the repository so that we could modify or read the DEI.MD file and certify it. So that that assumption does exist. Okay. And so I think it would be hard for a bad actor to have that kind of privileged access. What could to you the repo? Would it be possible on the DEI.MD file if we included a section called contributors? to that DEI.MD file and you would go on check to see that they have commit privileges and they were listed as a contributor to the DEI.MD file. Um, we could do that scanning. Obviously it depends on the person using the same name that they have in GitHub. So that scan might be. So we would have to say it would have to be yeah. put your GitHub username. Yeah, or your or the name that the you know the first name and last name you have on GitHub because sometimes people don't have their actual first name and last name on GitHub. Okay. I think though, to Matt, to your point, if someone's filling because they have to fill out a little form right to apply, yep. it's not automatic. But I could put the GitHub username of one of the maintainers, but put my email address, so that the report would be generated. I would be the one to get it. The maintainer who I used their GitHub name would have no idea. So I have that report. So when you when you submit the application, the intention then is that the person would be logged into GitHub and we would have access to their GitHub email address. And then because of that, we would be able to send an intend to send the report directly to the email associated with the GitHub account that makes the application. And right. since that GitHub account has to have access to the repo at a maintainer level, there is this, I think there is a certain degree of insulation. However, these are technical details that Enoch and I have discussed, and we haven't discussed them in light of there really needing to be this kind of policy in place. Mm -hmm. So we would this, I think it would just create a constraint, not a bad constraint, just a constraint that instead of this being kind of how we want to do it technically, I think it becomes the right way to do it in order to preserve the integrity of the process. The the that that report that, is going to the right person. To yes, that it's linked directly to the email and the GitHub account that makes the application. That GitHub account has to be a maintainer for the repo. Okay, could you and Enoch, when you settle on that, like write that policy down? Yeah, I'm. we have some notes. I'm just going to okay. run over there and make, because we meet on Fridays. Okay. And Can I'm you just going to make a note to talk the about thought this. Of a contributor list on the DEI.MD file too. I wouldn't mind over-engineering this if we could. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's any harm in a contributor list on the DEI.MD file. I think, I think- um, But that you would cross-reference to. Yeah, our our intention would probably be to rely on the on the GitHub account that makes the application and, and that email only because scanning the file creates the possibility of getting it wrong. It's it's a much higher probability that some way the name is expressed in the file will differ from the way it's expressed on GitHub. Um, okay. So scanning the file is like uh, a bunch of regular expression processing, and I think the likelihood that we get that right in each case is much lower than trusting the the GitHub account. But we can do it. Like I could mention it to our, uh, Enoch, and we could talk about it. Yeah, I'm, that would like be I'm not true. I'm not saying no. I'm just no, I get like that. thinking. Yeah, no, it I through. understand that. And that's why I'm bringing it up here, like to you, because I understand yeah. there's like technical constraints too. And Matt, when you say contributors, you mean contributors to that DEI.MD doc, not the project itself, right? right that's what I think. Who helped know. work on this doc? Yes, it would be whatever we have those four metrics listed and the things that they are doing to address those four metrics. And then there would just be a new subsection, kind of like our metrics, yeah. that would say contributors. And it would just be a list of everybody that contributed to that file. Yeah, I like that a lot. It also, I think, kind of helps with accountability too. That, you know, if someone does have a question, then they know who worked on it. <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. And transparency too of like who who worked on this. Like that's a transparent thing we want. So yeah, that's great. I think. Yeah, it's good for that. And then I'm hoping maybe that it could be helpful. But Sean, I understand if it's not, 
in well I, yeah it's i think it's just a question of um me not wanting to keep adding stuff to enox plate <laughs> oh that's fair i just i don't i just want to not sending that's the link. But i just yeah, want to make I, sure we're not sending that there's not a real good possibility that this report could be sent to somebody with like angry intentions yeah i th i think it's almost impossible but you know almost impossible doesn't really cut it <laughs> this is something Making it too actually sort of actually impossible would be better yeah impossible would be better but we can sort this out in testing as well like with our pilot folks like try, like have them try to get each other's or something like that. You yeah, know? right. And we're like, woof, yikes. <laughs> <laughs> right. That that's something we would want to maybe, yeah, iron out before we release. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I think on a technical level, I think we've thought of that, but I'm going to codify it here. Okay, I would really appreciate that. Thank yeah, you. I'm putting it at the top of our agenda. Okay. Okay, it's just something that crossed my mind this morning. So no, that's uh, yeah, no, that's. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, anytime you create a technology, I think it's reasonable to think about how our bad actor is going to weaponize it. And um, so. Okay, thank Good. you. Cool. We solved so many problems today. Oh my gosh. We're taking the rest of the day off. <laughs> done is done. Yeah. I have to go uh, buy some herbs. So. Oh, nice. All right. That sounds good. Yep. I'm to go hang out with my granddaughter later. So. That'll work too. Well, that sounds that. good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, y'all. Take care. Talk to you later. We'll see you later. Bye Have a good bye. one. See you later, everybody. Yeah.